Hello everyone. So in today's tutorial, I want to present a solution to a likely less common issue that some folks may need to solve in their Unity projects. Um, the solution is probably not well known. Uh, I've been a developer for more than 10 years in Unity, and this is something that uh, you know I had just discovered. And uh, I wanted to share uh, how to implement this solution and how to work with it. So just to establish a few uh, baseline items here that we're dealing with, I am uh, in the Unity Editor. I am also using the Unity LTS for this tutorial, 2020.33. It is the most recent LTS. There may be a newer versioning of LTS by the time you watch this tutorial, and that's fine. Uh, this built-in class has been present in Unity for quite some time. It is called Game Object Recorder. If you'd like to start from the documentation that Unity provides, they actually provide a code sample here. Uh, basically gives you the same exact functionality that I'm gonna demonstrate uh, in this tutorial, and just kind of walk you through. Has all kinds of cool um, methods and properties in here so that you can kind of customize this as well. I don't do a tremendous amount of customization myself, but this is exactly the class that you're going to want to look for. And what we're going to do in this tutorial today is we're going to solve the problem of uh, if you have the need to bake out any arbitrary motion, rotation, or scaling in Unity to an animation clip. And what I mean is uh, by arbitrary motion is a motion driven by the physics system uh, where you're actually simulating physics and say that you wanted to convert all of that realistic physics motion to an animation clip and then stop using the physics simulation. Maybe you want uh, things to be more performant. Maybe you have some constraints where you can't, you don't want to rely on sort of uh, the physics system going a different way than you intended being non-deterministic or something like that. So uh, Unity 2020.3, uh, and I uh, personally, I use the tall layout. And when I'm in the tall layout, I will usually make take my project over here because I don't really use the favorites menu to a one column here. And I'll have all of this stuff kind of docked. We're not using it in this tutorial, but generally I will also dock the lighting over here behind the inspector, kind of keep them over here. I just find that this sort of... Um, and I use the full HD 1920 by 1080. I find that this just maximizes, coming from an art background, that this just maximizes my ability to actually look at the scene content. Uh, what I have in here is just a basic camera, no big deal. When you create a new scene, it's gonna have some of these elements. Um, I believe this is URP, uh, but this game object recorder will work in HDRP, URP. It's agnostic of the rendering pipeline, so don't worry about that. You could even use built-in. I just have a ground plane with a collider on it. Uh, I have a couple of just root transforms here. I called them root A and root B. That is an arbitrary naming. Call them whatever you like. And inside is a cube with a rigid body and a box collider. I've done nothing to them other than to position them up in the y-axis so that they drop. One of the other things I like to do is always use this little gizmo switch in the scene tab and turn that off uh, while I'm sort of focusing on uh, motion and things like that in the viewport. I just don't want the gizmos in the way, so I hide those. But if you're missing your gizmos, just click that. Uh, of course, you have all of these different settings for your gizmos as well. So I have these physics objects. I've done no customization to these, so this is just a default rigid body and a default uh, box collider. And same goes for the sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play real quick. And so this is our arbitrary motion. In this case, the motion is driven by the physics system. Um, you may want to bake motion that is driven from code. Um, so, so say through like a tweening engine or something like that. So it's using a value driven approach to animate an object from a to B or to rotate that object to scale it. That would probably be one of the most common usages would be something like a tweening system and say for some reason in your project there is a requirement that the tween they need to be animation clips uh, so that is the kind of arbitrary motion it, it the this recorder doesn't care what's driving the original motion it could be physics it could be tweens code base database 
it bakes it to an animation clip. Uh, so another thing to note here is um, the way that the game object recorder works is it will traverse the hierarchy. It will start from a root. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder. And basically, I have copied this code here with just a couple of minor additions to it. And I'm going to take my code. I will open this up, and I will show you what I have. It's pretty much one for one uh, with what Unity has there in their clip. I have created a little bool here where I allow us to turn recording on and off, uh, depending on what parts of the animation you might want to bake. Other than that, everything else is pretty much one to one. You can freeze the video and kind of look at this code. Uh, it's extremely simple, so we really don't need to go through it in tremendous detail, but this is our animation clip. This is the Boolean that says we are writing that arbitrary motion to the animation clip. And this is our recorder object, game object recorder. This is that Unity built-in class that will bind and record the animation. So we create that recorder here. We bind all of the transform components uh, and all of the children. So this is where I was talking about it traversing that root hierarchy in the uh, inspector there. And then going through. Uh, it's all done in late update, and this is because that's the last thing run. So everything else is run before that. All the animation is processed, all the scripts, all the physics. And that makes sense. You want to record keyframes after everything else has been run so that you're getting everything. So we just check in here, is the clip null, uh, then return. So if there is no clip applied animation clip uh, in the inspector, then just, hey, exit out of this, right? If we're set to record, take that recorder and take a snapshot to every frame. Uh, else, if, uh, if, if it is recording, then save that, reset the recording back. Um, and then here is on disable. So as we uh, uh, disable this script or um, leave play mode. So I'm gonna return back. And what we'll do is hierarchy recorder is what I called it. Now again, arbitrary naming of this class. You can name this class whatever you need, you feel is appropriate for your usage. But I'm gonna take the, um, the cube. Let's just hide the sphere for now. I'm gonna take this cube and it wants an animation clip. So what we need to do is we go create. I, what I did there was right mouse button click create. Uh, if I can get this to come over and we have that. I'm gonna call it something appropriate. You just name yours, whatever you need. Um, and we have our animation clip. So I'm going to go back and select the object and we'll drag that in. One of the other things I'm going to do here is window animation. And I'm going to bring up the animation window so that we can see the keyframes. And I'm going to just dock it here at the bottom of my scene view. We're in scene view um, and it's docked down here at the bottom. Okay. Um, if I hit play, And then we check our animation clip. We'll see there are there is no animation recorded. We did not have the record button clicked. Okay, so make sure that you have that clicked. Now that we have that toggled on, or as I said, clicked, when we go back and check our falling animation, we'll now see that we have all of this keyframe data. Uh, might be a little difficult to see in the video, but here are the keyframes. One of the really great advantage advantageous aspects of this system or this built-in class in Unity, is that it doesn't record keyframes or it doesn't sense any rotation or uh, position changes. So you have these empty gaps of no keyframes being set, and that is awesome. Typically, uh, when you're baking stuff out of, say, like Maya, your basic baking physics, it will literally bake a keyframe every single uh, frame. And you end up with all these keyframes that have empty data, useless data, and that is really inefficient. Uh, obviously, the more keyframes, the bigger your animation component is and the more file size you have. And, and, and it's minimal, but we're talking micro optimizations here. So as we scrub through, we'll see that it is not playing back the falling animation on the cube. This is because the cube uh, needs, and I'm going to click Add Component, it needs an animator. Uh, the animator, as you folks probably already know, allows you to play animation clips, blend between animation clips, control anim the speed of animation clips, all of that stuff. The animator is sort of that core driving system uh, that you need to play animation clips. And we had created the animation clip prior. We want to play it now. Uh, the animator needs an animator controller. So we're gonna right click on the assets menu, 
create one. I'm actually not even going to do much to it. Just call it animator controller. And we're going to left mouse drag that into the um, animator window. What we can do now is either from here or on the actual animator controller, double click. And this is sort of the animator controller. And this is this sort of state machine where any state, entry state, exit, just these states the game is in. Are we in play mode? Have we started our game and entered that? Uh, and, and where are we uh, after we've hit the, hit the play button? Like uh, what state are we in? Um, so it allows you to sort of create all these custom states and blend between them. But really all we want to do in here is just drag our animation clip in. And at the entry point, it will automatically play this. And we're not going to do any settings or anything. The animator now has our falling animation clip. So if we set, select our clip now, and uh, I'm sorry, if we select our object now and we scrub through, we see um, that physics-based um, motion now baked down to this animation clip called falling. So it has all of that data in there um, based on that. And if we want to preview it, it does have to be selected. If you're not seeing the preview working as you scrub this, um, you do need to have it selected so that it brings up all of the information about this animation. And there it is. We can go in here on the cube and actually just remove these components. We'll hit the play button and it'll be indistinguishable from physics. But as we can see now, really, we just have a mesh renderer and a uh, mesh filter on there. But there you go. There's our physics baked down to um, an animation clip. If I hit loop, this thing should fall to the ground and go back up and restart and keep going. Uh, you do need to be cognizant of uh, this record button here. Um, as you can see, the motion stopped about here. The motion stops about here, but we've got all this long gap in here. And, uh, you know, that's the distance that is sort of the time delta between the motion stopping and me just sitting there watching the scene play and not stopping that or hitting or untoggling this record boolean here. So if you want to avoid having to go in here and clean up all of this empty uh, keyframe data, just make sure you're really, you know, on this like hitting record when it starts for what you want to bake and and untoggling that when you're done baking. And I went in there and just manually removed it. So we're all cleaned up now. But yeah, um, that's pretty awesome. And uh, it is again, we want to go back and reference. This is called Game Object Recorder. And uh, it's really cool. I, I had a project I was working where it wasn't the physics driven system that I needed to bake to animation clips, but rather it was code driven sort of tweened animation based on like a CSV file or a text file that was driving the motion of the object. And we needed that to be in just a traditional animation clip. And that's exactly what uh, this game object recorder allowed for, which was pretty awesome. Uh, yes, I'm sure some of you at, at some point in this video were thinking, well, this may be very useful for a uh, uh, a replay system. Depending on the length of your replay, this could get a little unwieldy. Uh, you know, if you have these animation clips that are really, really long, but if you're doing something like a race replay where maybe a race is only two or three minutes long or something like that, I don't think it's unreasonable to have a two or three minute long animation clip and you record uh, the motion. Uh, you just have to be really smart about how much you're recording and the hierarchies that you're recording. Uh, so that brings me to my last and final point. Uh, the recorder is will grab all child in the hierarchy. Um, so if you want to bake everything underneath of this, say there were multiple cubes or multiple objects, and uh, uh, you're going to make one animation called falling for everything underneath. However, if you, uh, I'm going to hit control D and put a child in there. If you want to do a different uh, animation in, within the same hierarchy or something like that, uh, create a different animation clip in here and record it as well. And it'll separate out that animation for the sub object. So it's really based on that 
parent-child hierarchy. Uh, if you want to record everything in that hierarchy, put it at the root. If you want to record just directly that object's motion, put it on that one with no children at all. Um, so be very smart about where you apply this and how you break out and name your animations different things depending on how you want to separate and control your animations, how you want to sort of break those out. I hope that this was helpful and uh, until next time.